kindness, being kind. So what I'm going to do is talk about the people who are the worst offenders of not being kind. Keyboard warriors. That's right. There are a lot of them. So I put up a quote that says, social media has made too many of you comfortable with disrespecting people and not getting punched in the mouth for it. (laughs) Kind of love that. Now, social media, we know it can be great for so many things. It can rekindle friendships, loves, put you back in touch with schoolmates, family members. It can help you keep much better contact with people that live far from you. It's great for finding groups that you would like to be part of. It can keep you informed of many things that are going on in your community, state, country, overall. You know, I as much as I, like Adele said, begrudgingly, I get a lot of my news from Facebook. Not because I count on Facebook for my news, but I'm just on Facebook more often than I'm watching a newscast. Or I'm on the news sites. So somebody shares that so-and-so died or what happened, you know, what have you. I just find it there first. Like I said, I I think social media is a great thing. If it weren't for social media, Joe and I probably wouldn't be married. You know, we became Facebook friends, and we did a little chatting back and forth before we finally got together uh, via Facebook. And um, I do believe that if it weren't for Facebook, we probably would not be together. Maybe. Mm, I, I don't think so, but it's possible. But it can also cause a lot of division between neighbors, family members, friends. It can... Make you feel, you know, kind of bad about yourself if you get into this bad habit of comparing your real life to those you see on social media. Always remember, people only put their best face forward on social media, for the most part. You do, you, you do have those Debbie Downers who are like, oh, my life sucks. Oh, this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, sometimes if somebody needs help and they want to reach out, I think that's great. But then you have these people who do it constantly. They're just constantly complaining about everything. And you know what I do? I hide those people. I'm tired of seeing your negativity. I don't need it. But you rarely see pictures of people sitting around watching television or stuffing their face after a long day at work. They might take a picture of their dinner. They don't take a picture of the four more dinners they have after that or the ice cream that they're shoving down their throat. No. You only see what people want to brag about, what they're proud of. You don't see anything They don't want you to see. And I I think that most people know this already, but never, never look at someone's social media account and think they have a better life than you because you have no idea what is going on beyond Facebook, Instagram, what have you. Now, it can also hurt feelings, and it has in my case, say when I've seen a group of friends posting pictures of a gathering that I, hmm, never got an invite to. It can also cause hard feelings when you get seemingly ignored at times completely and are left wondering if someone is upset with you. A lot of times it seems like high school and you've been kicked out of the cool group. Not that I would know what that's like. I was never in the cool group. I don't know. Like there's a group of people I used to work with like 15 years ago and they're all still very close. I've tried to remain close with them. They, they, they just don't seem interested in having me around. I finally just went ahead and deleted most of them from my Facebook feed because I'm just tired of seeing them all chatting together all the time like they're best buds. And whenever I chime in with something, I basically get ignored. So I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't need this anymore. Clearly they don't want to be my friend. So, okay, bye-bye. You don't want to be my friend. I'm not going to beg you. So out of sight, out of mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. But things are somewhat getting out of control when it comes to, To the nastiness, the dismissiveness, the straight-out bullying at times. Now, I see this really badly on my neighborhood community board, and these are supposed to be my neighbors. There's over 7,000 people in the group, and the fighting among the members, you know, the neighbors, has become so extreme. I'm ready to just give up and get out of the group. Now, I don't want to do this because... I feel like I'll miss out on upcoming events, news that's taking place in our area. But it just feels like grade school at times with the taunting and name calling and bullying. I've mentioned before that the top complaints we get on this board is fireworks being shot off, people putting their dog poop bags in other people's trash cans, and whether we should be feeding the ducks bread or at all. 
So, uh, you know, we get these certain people who think it's funny to put up a post of a cart full of fireworks and say they bought out the place and can't wait to set them off that night. Or there are comments made on a post that has nothing to do with the dog disposal issue, uh, but they'll bring that up. It's just silly and not necessary. You know, it might be funny the first time, not so funny the second time. And by the 15th time, the 54th time, it's just old. So once in a while, it may be funny. But like I said, it's just constantly happening. I call them the shit stirs. And unfortunately, they are the most active and the nastiest of the bunch. If you don't think what they post is funny, then it is you that has no sense of humor, which means you will face a ridicule and name calling. And they love to post gifts of uh, crying babies. And, you know, it's just some of the nastiest things I've seen since high school. You know, I'm kind of not I've, I'm kind of getting into Instagram a little bit more. And this is what's great about Instagram. They're all pictures. And there's not a lot of commentary. So there's not really the same type of nastiness going on on Instagram like there is on Facebook. So I've been getting into Instagram a little bit more. And again, if you're on Instagram, please follow me at the underscore hopefulist. And um, I'm really getting into the stories and I'm really playing with a lot and I'm learning a little bit more because I just don't know and really anything about all of this stuff. But I'm learning. Uh, I'm making progress. But <clears throat> back to Facebook. I have to clear my throat one more time. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. I hope that one worked. In my opinion, the biggest issue and problem are the political posts made on these community pages that I'm talking about. It's the same people posting over and over again. And again, just my opinion, but it looks to me like our community page is a cheerleading site for one particular political party. And if you have the audacity to disagree with their posts or even just say something like, this isn't the place to post this, you will now be subject to ridicule, name-calling, bullying, and just plain old nastiness. I have been told many times that I can choose to keep scrolling and ignore it. This is true. But I am tired of having our community board being viewed as a rally group for any political party. I think it makes us look bad. If it doesn't affect our community directly, I feel like it's these people just stirring up the crap. It's the same old stuff. I put up a political post myself recently just to say... You know, there's people that disagree with the constant political posts um, that are put up here constantly. And I made my case for the other side. I did it mostly because I was bored on a Saturday afternoon. I figured it would keep me busy for a while. And phew, wow, I was not bored after that. Um, so I just basically was saying I'm tired of the quiet major majority being ignored. Yeah, I opened the floodgates. It, before it was all over, there was about 400 comments on just this thread alone. Most of them were bashing me. I did have some backup and some praise for demonstrating the other point of view. I did have some people reasonably explain to me why they came up with their views, and that's fine. Uh, but the nastiness was ladled on. Yeah, it was extreme. So I was prepared for it. I was only going to respond to people who were making a rational comment, so I didn't let it bother me too much. But I did actually have one person who told me to go, go cry to my mommy. That's what they said. Go cry to your mommy. I was tempted to tell her that my mommy was dead, but I figured that would invite even more nastiness. So I let it I let it go. Now, I did have a friend text me the next day saying she wanted to send me a friendly text since people said so many mean things to me in that post. And uh, she was glad that I actually stated my point of view. I don't know. I said, you know, I, I was prepared for it. It's okay. Um, I knew I was going to get treated in that kind of way. So my point is, you know, I I knew that if I pointed, uh, if I posted my point of view, I would get this type of treatment. Why do I have to worry about this? If one side is constantly posting their point of view, why can't I do my point of view without fear of these type of repercussions? If it's the opposite side making a post and they are called names, they cry foul and lash out. But Again, these are the people who try, are trying to stir up trouble, and they're very good at it. But my question is why? Why do we feel entitled to be so nasty to people? Again, these are supposed to be my neighbors. And the sad part is, in real life, 
I know that these people in my community would do anything for me. If I needed them, they'd be there like this. But get them behind a keyboard and they become vicious. I was talking about this a little bit with my game night people last night. And she's, you know, one woman was like, you know, it's like this every year. Once summer's over, it'll calm down again. And she's probably right. <sighs> I need to let more things go. I know that. But at the same time, it's just not the place for political comments. These people are just trying to stir the pot. And boy, are they succeeding. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully. I don't know. I, I don't see people getting kind. I just think, especially in the social media aspect, I think it's it's just going to get worse before it could even begin to get better. But we'll see what happens. But for yourself, be a little kind today, whether it be online or in person. It is important to just show a little kindness. Really, be nice. Go back to when you were in first grade. The teacher told you, just be nice. Be nice to Johnny. Except if he pulls your hair. Then you can punch him in the face. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. A little bit I'm kidding. All right, people. It is Taco Tuesday. Like I said, spread a little kindness around. We could certainly all use it. And please, as always, make it your best day yet. Thank you for listening to The Hope List, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist.